Spiritual Teaching 243 Love Each Other 1. My fire of love descends to you to warm your heart and light a burning flame in your spirit, because the lamp that illuminates your interior has been on the verge of extinguishing in some, while in others it has turned off, and only darkness of uncertainty presents itself to me. But my light is made in everyone at this moment. 2. Why go back or stop on the road you have started? Go ahead, disciples. 3. Humanity already awaits my envoys, the bearers of the good news. Those emissaries are you, witnesses of my presence and my word in the third era. Can men reach me through any of the different religions? Then you will see that there is only one way for the elevation of humanity, and that is the one that I pointed out to you in my law in the first era, path that was sealed in the second era with my blood and illuminated by my Holy Spirit in this time. 4. All my law is condensed into two precepts, love of God and love of neighbor. That is the way. 5. Religions are little truths that lead spirits to the true path by which they can ascend step by step until reaching me. While men profess different religions on earth, they are divided, but when they are on the path of love and truth, you will have united, you will have identified with that unique light because only one is the truth. 6. But the walkers, the pilgrims have stopped and are sleeping. Love and truth have fled from hearts. That is why I have come to speak to you and prepare emissaries that with love and charity awaken and raise up those who are lost or tired, before the elements are unleashed and with their imposing voices they take charge of awakening spirits, feelings and intelligence. 7. Against the spiritual doctrine his enemies will rise up, brandishing their best weapons, using all their force, seeking testimony against this revelation. But truly I tell you, this light that has arisen in this time, there will be no human power to extinguish it, as at that time men could not silence the voice of Christ, nor with the sacrifice of Golgotha, because the blood shed there for them, continued to speak for an eternity. 8. Do not fear to be called impostors or sorcerers, all those blasphemies were thrown on your master and were also the title that the unbelievers and the wicked gave to my prophets and my apostles. But when the truth of God and the truth of his own then he triumphed, those who blasphemed the most were later the most repentant and fervent, like Paul. 9. In my apostles of the third era, there is also the woman who, having been the one who accompanied the master on the path of bitterness to the foot of the crucifixion tree, ignoring blasphemies and enduring mockery, now in the third era she has been a faithful worker, strong spirit and fighting soldier, for I have given her a seat at my table at this time, because the apostle is in the spirit, without distinction of sex. 10. Work together and walk the path of truth until you reach the promised land. 11. This is the time when Israel will rise up in humility, without publishing charity. Let him not see as sinister what he gives the right hand. Let him not make a show of being a disciple of the Lord, or seek flattery. When that is, they will be joined by spiritual legions into true armies, to form a single will, a single front, whose struggle lead to combat ignorance, sin and religious fanaticism. 12. This people, this army of men and spirits, will be the guardian of this work in future times, so that it is not mystified the doctrine and the law, so that man ceases to fight against the truth. 13. Under the shadow of my doctrine, thrones will not be built, from which great men can dominate the spirits of his brothers. No one shall crown himself or cover himself with a purple robe, trying to occupy the Lord's place, nor confessors will emerge to judge, forgive, condemn, or sentence the acts of humanity. To judge from a just and perfect court to a spirit, only I can do it. 14. I can send those who correct, teach, and guide, but I will not send those who judge and sanction. I have sent those who have been shepherds of humanity, but not lords or overseers. I am the only father of the spirit. 15. Spirituality will infiltrate your spirit and will be transmitted to future generations, who will find in their flesh an instrument docile to the mandates of the consciousness and great clarity to receive divine inspirations. From those generations will be able to emerge the great teachers of spiritual teaching, and also great scientists, from clear mind and intelligence. There will be exemplary patriarchs for their morality and virtue, prophets and apostles will emerge from the truth. 16. 
When I tell you to prepare yourself, it is also so that you can leave your children, as a testament, your example of obedience, of spirituality and brotherhood, your works of love towards your brothers. 17. Then your name will be blessed and remembered by the generations of tomorrow, who will love you through the trace of your struggle, of good deeds and examples worth following. How can you not be recognized by your children, if you are the ones who are cleaning the road of thorns and thistles so that they do not get hurt? So do not pass with indifference over the roughness of the path without removing the obstacles, because those who come after you, if they find the obstacle or the thorn, they will claim you and there will be those who will curse you. 18. You will have to perfect your practices in my doctrine, so that those who come after you, contemplate that you were able to fulfill and practice what seemed impossible to many. You will have to show that spiritualism it is not a fantasy, nor a doctrine too advanced, but it has come to manifest itself among humanity at its due time, when the spirit is enabled by its evolution to understand and execute it. 19. This is the time when the spirit of Elijah vibrates throughout the universe, illuminating all the worlds, all the paths and all spirits, awakening those who sleep, raising the dead, and discovering among the huge crowds to those who are part of the 144,000 marked or unmarked, who have from the beginning of the times a charge of the Lord for humanity. 20. Thus have I now formed, with spirits that once belonged to the twelve tribes of Israel, the new families of this people, at whose table those who were from the tribe of Reuben sit next to those of Levi or Zebulun, to erase with this borders, limits and schisms. In this there is divine justice. 21. Do not work to magnify the name of an enclosure or yours. Work so that my name and my doctrine are recognized and honored by your brothers. When in 1950 I have to speak to you for the last time, it will not be to receive the people divided into groups or enclosures. I will receive all my workers without judging which compound practiced best my teachings and which was the one who did not know how to submit to my will. 22. I will not count the increased or scarce number of workers that each enclosure houses. I will receive from each heart its tribute and with it I will all make a single heart where to build my sanctuary. 23. Elijah has been in your path and his power has made you win in the fight against unbelievers, fanatics and materialists. 24. He united the people in the first era, when the schism divided them. And at this time, spiritually with your light of love, came to join you again. 25. Remember that at that time the people divided into two kingdoms, leaving ten tribes on one side and two on the other. The greater part had fallen into idolatry and had become worshippers of Baal. Then Elijah arose among them, to let my glory, my existence and my power manifest before the pagans, and spoke to them thus, I, Elijah, come in the name of Jehovah your God whom you have unknown and before whom you have raised up false gods and idols, I come to tell you to put their power to the test that I will also call upon the presence of the Lord, my Lord, and the one who is heard, the true God will possess. 26. The worshippers of Baal accepted, making a holocaust, invoked their God and asked him to send them fire, to show its existence and power. For days and nights the priests and crowds were invoking with dances and feasts to the false god, while the holocaust remained unchanged. Elijah then built his burnt offering on an altar made up of twelve stones representing the twelve tribes of God's people. He invoked Jehovah and said, Lord, I, your servant, I beg you to manifest yourself before these who have not known you, so that they may once again worship and glorify you. And the Father saw fit to manifest himself in the midst of a tempest from which a thunderbolt broke out and fell on the prophet's holocaust, setting it on fire. And the idolaters, the blind and the unbelievers, understood that the one sent by the true God was Elijah, the prophet of fire in which all evil disappears and with whose light darkness is illuminated. 27. That is the one who prepared the way for me to come to you, the one who gathered at this time spirits that were from those twelve tribes, which now stood like rocks, to make the lightning descend upon the new holocaust universal of my divinity, because again you were divided and distant, but this light returned to unite you for an eternity. 28. Now I say to you, welcome, all of you, the first as the last, the disciple as the toddler, the fervent as the unbeliever. 
29. I prepare you all because the world will ask you for proof of my new manifestation. 30. Many religions exist on this earth, but none of them will unite men or make them love one another. It will be my spiritual doctrine that will realize this work. It will be in vain for the world to oppose the advance of this light. When the intense persecution of my disciples is over, the elements will be unleashed, but they will be appeased by the prayer of these workers, so that humanity behold a proof of the power I have given you. 31. Do not sleep so that you will not be confused between the pain and the chaos of the world, after having risen over all of it to me. 32. Do not waste this time trusting that a better one will come, because the moment that is marked for you will come to return to the spiritual valley and then, even if you ask for the prolongation of your life, to carry out your mission, you will find my justice, who will tell you that this opportunity has passed. 33. Recognize that you have the mission of receiving into your bosom the weary traveler and the sinner exhausted by vice, that in your example, in your advice and teachings they will find their regeneration. 34. I do not come to you as judge, because I see you coming to me in search of consolation to mitigate earthly penalties. But I teach you to do with your brothers what I do with you. Remember that when I have entrusted you this spiritual inheritance, I have told you, give to your fellow men, the needy, that if for them you neglect yours, I will watch over them. 35. This doctrine will not be defended with murder weapons, the only weapons that I have entrusted to you to fight for it, they are the words of light and the works of love. Who fences them well will see how bad ones fall before them of intentions and attacks suffered. 36. When you try to exhort a sinner to good, do not do so by threatening him with my justice, with the elements or with the pain of not regenerating, because you will instill aversion to my doctrine. Show the true God, who is everything love, charity and forgiveness. 37. You are not the only ones upon whom the light of the Holy Spirit has come in this third era. This light is within and on every human creature, in every spirit, as well as before you this time has opened as a precious occasion to elevate you, it has also stood before the ministers, priests, and pastors of all religions as one opportunity to amend mistakes and fulfill the will of the Father. 38. You seek to please me, for this you will have to please your brothers. They will listen carefully to the good news, if with true works of love you bear witness to my truth. 39. After 1950 you will not hear my word in this way again, but I have already taught you how you can achieve communication from spirit to spirit, make yourselves worthy of it by the elevation and good practice of my teachings. You will not be left without my inspirations and my new revelations. 40. The places where you meet will not be adorned with ornaments, seeking to please my divine spirit with these finery. My presence will be best felt in humility and simplicity. 41. I will prepare strong men who understand and interpret my doctrine in a clean way, so that they are encouragement among the multitudes, and the children see in them a good example, because this people will be the seed of fraternity, unification, and concord. 42. I have wanted that at the end of this time in which I am communicating, you form a family in which they love each other, that the pain of one is felt by the others, as corresponds to true brothers, understand that you have sprouted from the same father. When you achieve this ideal, your strength will be invincible. 43. Do not judge the value of your own gifts or compare them with that of your brothers. Do not say that some have been given more than others, because having given to each one his gifts and his mission, each creature gathers on the path of his. Life the fruit of his love and his perseverance, as well as that of their faults and deviations. In the different positions that you carry out within my work, there is justice, restitution and also reward, but no one knows if he has achieved it by merits or by a debt contracted with his Lord. 44. My teaching will be unforgettable for your spirit, both on earth and in the spiritual valley. It will never rebel in his journey and being in contact with his Father, he will always be able to hear his voice, because I am the light of the world, whoever comes to me will not perish. 45. The union of human flesh with the spirit I did. Thus I formed the first man, to whom from the beginning I revealed my law through different manifestations, 
to make him recognize the love that he must keep for his Lord and his brethren. 46. My teachings have made humanity recognize itself as the daughter of the Father. This is why I tell you that wars among men they have no foundation, because the Creator has enabled everyone to reason, feel and understand, but not all reason through consciousness and less value their own spirit, because they let themselves be carried away by their earthly ambitions. Man should always keep in mind that he is part of myself, which is made in my image and likeness. 47. You will soon know that you have come to this planet more than once, but not to get confused or lost in it. So you will understand that that body that you have and that you love so much is only an instrument of the spirit to which it is attached while living in this world. 48. You have been witnesses of this advent, you have received my revelations and teachings and you have contemplated my manifestations. 49. For many today these lessons are incomprehensible, and yet, when the time comes, they will understand them through your word and your works. My word comes to illuminate human thought. Its light will reach all spirits to lead them towards the path of truth, away from fanaticism, awakening them and making them hear the voice of your consciousness. 50. Different ways I have used through the ages to come to you, I became human in Jesus. The way you have me now is the highest and deepest, because you feel me, touch me and hear me through your spiritual elevation and your inspiration. 51. To communicate through human understanding I limit myself, according to the capacity of the one for whom I speak and who listen to me. There are those who listen to me and cannot understand me, while others without hearing me understand me. Those of you who have now heard me are the ones called in this third era to take another step towards spirituality. Also in the early days, the people rose up at the voice of the prophets to abandon their idolatry. You have been until now the people who are conservative of traditions but deep down in. Your being you await my new advent to abandon useless traditions and vain rites, in exchange for spirituality that is an interior worship of humility, charity and love. 52. I am leaving you this message that you must carry beyond the seas. My word will cross the old continent and will reach the men of Israel, who in fratricidal struggle have risen up over a piece of land, without realizing the misery of his spirit. You cannot understand the trial the world will go through. Everyone hopes for peace and this will only be effective after the elements have borne witness to me. 53. Men are no longer afraid of my justice. The war has been cruel and humanity it does not regenerate and it is not that I punish human sins with war. If my justice allows it, it is because man has to be debugged. 54. Many are those who call themselves sons of God, but very few who really recognize me because my divinity you must seek it with the spirit. But the time of awakening, of resurgence, of resurrection is already among you. After sowing, the fruit will come, but it will not only be the product of human evolution, but also the work of my heavenly power. It is necessary that you prepare and contribute so that the new generations can flourish and give good fruits. See that your faith does not diminish, because after 1950, you will have to testify and prophesy the truth of my doctrine. 55. John, my disciple, contemplated the events that were to be. By divine command, he contemplated the future and revealed for the salvation of humanity. He watched as the marked ones were saved. You are one of those indicated and you will not perish, nor those who approach you as a last refuge. 56. Your lips will be heralds that make my word known to humanity. 57. People of Israel, I have prepared you to caress and anoint the sick, to multiply the bread of those who suffer scarcity and to bring peace to your brothers. 58. I come this day to examine your sowing, what you have reaped, and to ask you, how did you lead your children and if you have prepared the way for the generations to come? 59. You look for my footprint at every moment and you say to me, how should I behave in this or that instance? I tell you, my word teaches everything, Study it and in it you will find the solution that you seek. 60. The path that you travel is rugged, but each step, each work that you do within my law, brings you closer to the end that every spiritualist has. 61. 
Your restitution is great and for the same reason your pain is also great, but when you have paid your debts and you have worked your salvation, you will understand that the pain was not in vain and that your destiny is just. 62. Why have you not served one another, as a servant does his Lord? Understand that it is not less the one who serves, because his humility elevates and dignifies him. All the mandates that I have given you, you can fulfill them, they are within the reach of your capacity and virtue. I told you that you love each other and that you do charity without any interest, that you do not expect the reward from your brother, that metal it is not the price of your love or sacrifice for others. 63. Forgive each other and in this you will find relief for yourselves and for the one who has offended you. Do not carry over in your spirit the weight of hatred or resentment. Be clean and you will have found the secret of peace and you will live as apostles of my truth. 64. On this day you will remember the beings that belong to you on earth, your parents, children or brothers, and there are those who in the midst of their confusion they claim me for having led them to the spiritual valley, and I tell them, the bonds of love that united you, they have not been broken, you all live within this universe and you will go from one scale to another until you reach the end, and there you will find yourself with everybody. Those beings for whom you ask me have not died. They live and there is greater clarity in their spirit than in you. Is it so enlightened and far from having lost them? They are for you a staff and consolation in pain, intercessors and protectors. They unite because they are united to me by love and consciousness. They do not suffer. They are satisfied because they are evolving and perfecting to reach my breast. 65. Mary, your intercessor, sends her tenderness, her strength and her peace over the world. 66. I do not distinguish anyone. All of you are equal before me. In all I have put the same grace, the same life and the same inheritance. You are all formed in my image and likeness. But on earth you are different from each other. Contemplate how your same body does not find another the same on earth. You all bear different faces and different names and manifest different gifts in the struggle for life some in one form and others in another, and that is why you raise different crops. 67. But truly I tell you, that when the spirits reach the utmost perfection, all are equal to each other before your Lord. Who is the one who truly follows me? She who loves me, loving me, follows me loving her neighbor as herself. She who is neither idolatrous nor fanatic. She who forgives her enemy. She who forgets herself to think of others that's the one that follows me. Ah, if your lips that are silent today were to open, how much salvation would flow from them. But behold, fear and laziness overcomes you. Doubt assails you and therefore you have not yet risen to fulfill your high mission. 68. Learn to penetrate the hearts of your brothers. Do it with respect, because truly I tell you that the heart of man is my temple no matter how sinful, blasphemous, or unworthy of me you judge. Woe to you if you did not respect that. Temple, the flame may be out, its flowers are withered and the altar collapsed, but in truth I tell you, behold my temple, temple created by me from the beginning to inhabit it. So penetrate the hearts of your brothers on tiptoe and with respect, and see that by entering it without the preparation and elevation that is the product of prayer, you would desecrate that temple. 69. If you want to fan the flame, if you want to water the flowers and want to rebuild the altar in the heart of your brother, prepare yourselves before with the brief but heartfelt prayer and thus, raised and prepared, you will speak and you will be heard. 70. To bear good fruit, people, you must have patience and perseverance. By chance in the world do you raise a harvest the same day of sowing? Why then do you hope to instantly reap the fruit you have sown in the human heart? which is usually harder than the stones themselves. Do you want to gather the fruit of conviction and faith of the heart of the unbelievers at the moment of having sown? 71. No, beloved people, not all lands are fertile and not all are fertile. There are hardened and there are sterile. What will you do when you come across those hardened hearts? Tell them about the divine teachings, fertilizing them with your good examples, preparing the furrow to drop the good seed, and then, watching over your plot, providing the necessary irrigation. And only then, when his time is ripe, will the seed flourish and that land will bear good fruit, because not a single one of my words will be lost. 
My peace be with you.